All right, so let's continue dissecting our slides here. So what I want to go through next is how to create the two different menus. So basically, this is the first menu that appears, and it's the third slide. I do have a hidden slide here that we can play around with. So in this slide, you'll notice that it's just a bunch of shapes. I have rectangle here on the bottom um, with text, and then these are rectangles also with text in them. And then I just have this B guy. It was a graphic I found, and I added a little rectangle with more text that, uh, for the instructions. And over these rectangles, let me move him out of the way. Over these rectangles, what I did is I added another rectangle, and in this transparent rectangles where the hyperlinks are. So if I um, go to hyperlinks here we can pretty much right click it or go to hyperlinks and you'll see where it hyperlinks to. You want to make sure that you bring this shape forward and we just do bring forward and you want to make sure and then you can just drag and drop it over your shape um, and that's how we create the hyperlinks. You can add the hyperlink directly to the shape itself. I prefer to do a blank uh, box over it just because then I can reuse the graphic later. Um, and for this B guy here, basically what I did is I just added a motion path. And um, there's different motion paths that you can apply to him to have him come in in different ways. Um, you just have to play around with it. And you can choose one that works for you. Um, let's try this uh, sine wave. Just click OK. And you notice that he was a little squiggly there. And we'll just bring it up and bring him up. And we keep him off of the, um, the main slide because we actually want him to fly in. And let's do that and bring it down. I'll show you what it looks like. And this is basically what it's going to look like. Oops, we have to actually uh, do it uh, with previous here so we can see it. And there we go. And there's the B guy. And... Um, the hyperlinks are there. Okay, so now for the bottom menu down here, um, this menu that appears on all the slides, this is just a bunch of shapes, and I have a blank slide here. So basically, I have one main rectangle, and then I have some uh, rounded rectangles, and again, I have a blank rectangle. So I'm just going to bring that down here, and I would add text to it, and then I would bring uh, my blank rectangle here. And I want to bring it forward because I want it to be on top and it has a hyperlink. As you see. And then we would just drag that on top. You can then copy and paste. Um, you can group this and copy and paste it to all your other slides. And that's how you would basically create the menu at the bottom. Um, I did. You can add this to your master slide. I didn't add it to my master slide because what I did is on... Um, the slide that is pertaining to the topic, I actually removed um, a hyperlink from it. So this one has no hyperlink. You'll notice it down here. Let me just bring this down here. You notice that I just brought the uh, hyperlink down so you, can, you can't see it anymore. There you go. So the box is down here. I just dragged it down. Um, so I didn't actually remove it, to take it off the slide, or delete it. I just brought it off so it won't show up in the actual slide. And uh, I match the backgrounds of the slides to their buttons. And that's basically how I created that. Um, one last thing, you notice that I have two slides here at the end um, that say, okay, you've chosen to end your training. Um, they will get these two slides when they click on the message that's found right here. Now this message basically reads, make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. It says, oh, choose another topic which they would do by clicking on one of the menu buttons or click here to end. So there's a hyperlink right here on this click here to end and I'll show you how that looks here. So basically they're on this slide and when they click here to end it takes them to the last two slides and there's uh, a link and information and then it goes to the final transition slide. And that's basically how I created this interactive slide. In the next slide I'm going to show you how I saved this and how you can actually publish this.